Hello, this is Frank Wilczek. I'm going to say a few words about a paper I wrote recently called Resonant Quantum Computing with Monitor Qubits with two gifted collaborators, Hang Ye Hu and Biao Wu. Uh, the subject of the paper is quantum computing. And uh, quantum computing, of course, is a subject that's exploding and developing rapidly in many directions and is becoming quite real in, in the sense that hardware for, for it is beginning to materialize. However, uh, it's still early days and it's not clear that what the correct uh, physical implementation is that's going to be most useful in the long run or exactly how to use it. Most of the work on quantum computing theoretically is based on what's called a circuit model, which is uh, based on using gates that are kind of similar in spirit to the gates that are used in uh, classical computers. But quantum mechanics conceivably could be used in other ways. And in this paper, we explore one of them. We had the intuition that a very powerful general method in quantum mechanics called resonance, which allows you to uh, manipulate states and do states and home in on uh, certain states uh, in very flexible ways, that this could be a powerful supplement to uh, the circuit model or alternative to the circuit model in uh, specific applications. Now, to test that out, we tried uh, it out. We, we wanted to do a definite problem. So we homed in on what's called the, the Grover problem one of the classic problems of quantum computing. It's one of the few cases in which uh, quantum computers have demonstrably superior performance to uh, classical computers in a problem that's fairly natural. The Grover problem is the problem when you have a list of n items, one of which is special, but you don't know which, uh, to find that item. Uh, classically, you can do that only by uh, searching through the, the, the list one by one, and that takes a time of order n. Quantum mechanically, it turns out that you can exploit the superposition and parallelism uh, afforded by superposition in, in quantum mechanics to improve that and get, get it through, do your search in a time that goes like square root of n. So uh, we wanted to see uh, whether we could reproduce or improve upon that kind of performance using resonance as opposed to a circuit model. So as I mentioned, the Grover problem is the problem of finding one entry in, in, in a list. Uh, another, uh, the physical implementation of this involves looking for one state of lower energy. We don't know the state in advance, but one state of lower energy among n states, all of which otherwise have equal energy. And this is a perfect problem for quantum resonance, which is very good at homing in on states with a definite, definite energy. And sure enough, we found that well, when you follow through the mathematics, the resonance technique works very, very well for that problem. And uh, in what I think is fair to say is a very clear, simple, and transparent form gets the best result that it takes a time of square root of square root of n. But the real fun comes when you generalize the Grover problem to uh, a, a slightly more complicated problem in which there are an unknown number, call it K, of uh, items that are special, or it, in terms of a list, or in, term, in physical terms, you have K states. We don't know what they are, but you know that they have an energy which is lower than uh, the other states. And the problem is now to find one of those states and also to determine what K is. The fun really starts when we consider a more general form of the Grover problem in which uh, the list has K special items out of N and you don't know 
which items they are, and you also don't know what K is. So that's uh, a harder problem, and it's still a subject of research in quantum computing. It's not completely clear what the best uh, circuit algorithms are, how well, it, how well they can do, and the known protocols, I think it's fair to say, are rather complicated for solving this problem. Uh, we found that resonance really helps in, in that more general problem. So I won't try to tell you about the, the details of the protocols we developed. For that, you'll have to read the paper. But I would like to mention one particular idea that um, came up in, in, in des designing these protocols, which I think is very powerful and may have many other applications. This is the idea of a monitor qubit. What a monitor qubit does is allow you to uh, tell whether resonance has occurred in the main computation. So you have computational qubits, which are doing a computation, and then you have a monitor qubit, which is telling you in, uh, important information about how the computation has proceeded. Uh, by measuring the monitor qubit without measuring the computational qubits, you can uh, tell whether the computation has progressed and if it hasn't, you can turn it off and start all over again. If it has, you keep going. So that's one way that you can use uh, monitor qubits to advance the calculation. But a more uh, uh, ambitious and I think more promising and interesting uh, application is if you, if you have several, many monitor qubits and use them to uh, monitor the progression of the calculation in more flexible ways. And you can be continue in this way, you can be continuously gathering information about intermediate stages of a computation and deciding to intervene or not, or when to make measurements, when to extract information without doing a, without interfering with the uh, computational qubits, which infamously in quantum computers sort of destroys the information uh, in the process of measuring it. So uh, in particular, if you have many uh, qubits that are monitor qubits that are realized as spins, the spins generate a magnetic field and that mag magnetic field can be measured. And if you have enough of these monitor qubits, uh, the magnetic field can be measured without significantly dis disturbing uh, their internal state, and also uh, if you have many of them, uh, small errors in any one of them gets averaged over. So uh, in this way, uh, we get performance on that generalized Grover algorithm, which is qualitatively different and better than the circuit models. Uh, so uh, the lesson of this is that quantum computing is a physical issue, not, not just a mathematical issue, uh, that the circuit model is not necessarily sacred, and uh, that there are plausible physical mechanisms that uh, where you can, by changing the resources available to a quantum com computation, uh, you may be able to do much better than uh, conventional thinking uh, would lead you to expect.